Good tidings, all you beautiful individuals. Welcome back. It's another epi of League Unlock, and we've hit the sweet spot, Mark. We get the break in between Worlds matches, the full weeks now in the knockout rounds, and that means it's just time and time again. Rumor here, rumor there, LCS change here, off-season stuff happening, and, you know, this newly established Sheep Esports just pumping out. Gone are the days of the Jacob Wolf bombs, and now it is the sheep's uh, wool fur. I don't know. We got to come up with something for stuff they're dropping. I got no sheep-related puns to go we'll with work that. Up. But you are a hundred percent right. We are right in the midst of where the LCS and the LEC gets busy with the off-season rumors. Of course, while the LCK and LPL finish things out at the World Championship. That doesn't mean that these off-season rumors aren't exciting, aren't juicy to be talking about, aren't the type that make you salivate, make you think already about the next season before we're there. And, you know, more often than not these days, uh, a Twitter meme ends up coming true. You know, guys replying saying, oh, curious, totally unrelated. But here's a picture of Whippo most likely going to FlyQuest. That's the latest one to chat on. And now you're talking back-to-back off-seasons where... FlyQuest building up a hype roster. I know last year it didn't live up to that hype, but now this projected rumored squad, we got Bwipo alongside inspired for that EU top lane. Still a question mark in that mid lane. Masu in at 80 carry most likely, who's one of the most hyped up young players coming from the academy scene, which we love to see. And now I've been seeing some Busio rumors maybe coming over as support. Oh, baby, FlyQuest at it again. And kind of surprising given the the climate, the landscape, the budgets that we are expecting to start to see in the LCS to see FlyQuest double down again. Say we are going they in. They found some cash in. under the couch cushion. Oh, oh, yeah. boy. You th you'd think after how things went last year, maybe a little bit hesitant to invest in the import market. Still, investing in that import market, maybe a little bit closer to home with someone like Whippo from the LEC. And again, Whippo last time playing was with Team Liquid in the LCS. So seeing that familiarity, I love this move. I think that this is a player that, again, we talked about last year. It was a real, almost, you know, I don't want to over, you know, oversell it, but a tragedy, really, not having him play out there on the rift what he could offer, the personality, all these things. The thing for FlyQuest that I think is going to be the biggest one, the creativity, the way that he views the game, the itemization, the champions, not just in his position, but around the map, I think is going to be a great and invaluable asset for this squad. And, you know, I love when teams now are putting together a combo of young talent and veterans. And if this does end up being the bot lane, you've got the rookie in Masu and still a young player in Busio with only one year under his belt, but paired with a couple of veterans and not just veterans, but guys who have played at the highest level in Bwipo and Inspired. And these are two guys who are some of the most vocal and will obviously be the leaders on this squad. That's a perfect combo for me. Yeah, I think that this is going to be a, a little bit more of a surefire guarantee for this FlyQuest squad. You don't think about the type of uh, pits that you could drop into like you had last year with players like Vickle and Prince and what went wrong in that situation for the FlyQuest team all behind the scenes. This iteration, what you've got right now, you got to have that belief. This is going to work out. As you mentioned, that young bottom lane, Masu coming in, as well as rumored Busio. I like it. I think that there is an option where you could look at it and want to have maybe one of those players in that in that you know kind of duo role be more of a veteran. But I think Busio got enough alongside Double Lift last year, and now he gets that opportunity to kind of shepherd in a, a, the the youngster on this FlyQuest roster. So now, obviously, the last spot, the mid lane. I believe, if I'm understanding this right, because Whippo and Inspire are going to have green cards, they will still have an import slot to use up if they want in the mid lane. I haven't seen too many rumors for who that mid laner is going to be. I've seen some people say, oh, yeah, Jensen, Jensen's free off dig. I mean, I guess you could throw him in there, but I don't know what they're going to be doing mid lane. I. Uh, we're in the same boat, my man. I think we're going to have to be waiting out and see and kind of maybe where a couple of other dominoes fall into that situation to sort this one out for FlyQuest. You are right that it is extremely interesting seeing that the way things are going to fall out, that you will have that extra import slot. And I don't think a lot of times we have seen an LCS team pass up 
fully utilizing those import slots. So I think keeping an eye on that one for FlyQuest is going to be the move moving forward. But Bwipo coming in means obviously Impact is not going to be there. And I know we were both saying, bring him back the reunitedness with Cloud9. But now it sounded like Fudge will be returning, which means it's a different spot for Impact. And that means we've got the projected starting five for Cloud9 now with Fudge returning alongside Blabber. Obviously, JoJo the big signing, Berserker, and then Vulcan. And that, even with Fudge returning and maybe everyone being a little bit low on that, that's the favorite to win the spring split. Yeah, I think there needs to be a conversation about this uh, attitude and everything around Fudge and that top side returning to Cloud9. The reason why a lot of people are, you know, maybe not so over the moon or wanted a change type of thing is looking at the results internationally, looking at the performances, looking at the underperformances, specifically for a player like Fudge and where that has caused issues for the other members of this team where you think that they are going to flourish. They're going to be a reason why you've got a chance internationally. You've seen Fudge be the reason why you don't, unfortunately, more often than not with these Cloud9 rosters. That's not forgetting when you look domestically he has been a very dominant player he has more than filled that role more than succeeded for cloud nine in their trip to the lcs final so many times the championship runs that they have had he has been a massively important part of that so that can't be forgotten that can't be swept aside that still also is true to the, the can't be swept aside about the concerns the doubts that people do have about him with this roster internationally and the big concern, I think, is just the play style. You saw at Worlds how much attention he was getting. He wasn't able to do much with his leads. And, I mean, as a team, the coaching staff, Blabber, going to have to say, listen, pal, enjoy playing weak side. Because we got Jojo Pion and Berserker, and that is going to be the win condition more often than not for Cloud9. So he's, I think, going to have to adapt to be playing with much less resources in 2024. And... That's not to say a player like Fudge can't do that. Right. And we've seen various levels of, of weak side play from him in the past type before. And maybe sometimes when Cloud9 is adjusting to what they were going to do with Berserker and how good he was, as well as maybe a couple of times we have a Menez playing something a little bit more carry orientated in that mid lane. You would change things up a little bit, but still it's going to be something where I'm expecting. And this is also playing into that a little bit. Vulcan is a support who loves to roam around, and he's also roamed into that top side, even further than just that mid lane, to help pop off and make some of these plays happen. So that's not out of the question, but it is going to be that expectation that the weak side is the more often role you're going to be put into with players like Jojo Pyun, like Berserker, and someone like Blabber to get them ahead. I think he's prioritizing those two than Mr. Fudge in the top side, even with whatever composition you want to run. Yeah, and Vulcan can absolutely be the connector piece. Obviously, he's played with Fudge before, with Blabber, and with Jojo Pian. So he's got experience with everybody but the bot laner that he's going to be matching up with in Berserker. So we mentioned Busio potentially going over to FlyQuest. There was maybe some inklings that him and Doublelift would be a package deal because Mr. Travis Gafford saying 100 Thieves are... Everybody's going. We're building around General Sniper, the 17-year-old rookie phenom. But if Busio goes to FlyQuest, where's Doublelift going to end up? I mentioned when Sven is becoming a free agent, there's a lot of viable suitors for him, and the same is going to be said for Doublelift. Uh, I, I'm sure I'm, we're not the first ones to make this joke, but it seems that 100 Thieves budget is about 100 quid, right? That's <laughs> all we're, we're rolling with that squad. And unfortunately for General Sniper, who I'd love to welcome into the league and, and, and hope for very best with this 100 Thieves roster. 100 Thieves doesn't exactly have the very best track record of sticking with development, and especially development of top laners. Don't kill tenacity. this guy's career before it even starts. One of the most hyped up prospects we've had in years. Nate Shot, I'm looking at you. I'm calling you out. You better make sure that this is well supported and goes through the potential of these players. Want to see the very best for General Sniper and 100 Thieves, who they'll be bringing through in a new roster. But you're right. you got to be looking at where the fire sale is leading from this 100 Thieves team, and that is, yes, double it. Leaving out Closer as well, most likely leaving this team someday. We've already talked about leaving the organization. It's going to be a different time. And for someone like Double Lift, as well, you can probably lump Sven into this conversation too. There's going to be a lot of pretty good, pretty interesting opportunities for you if you want to stay in the LCS that are available. Yeah, I mean... Apart from Berserker and Cloud9, who's clearly top dog ADC, 
every other team, really. You can be inquiring. You can talk, you know, Shopify Rebellion, the new TSM squad. Now it's time for Doublelift to maybe come home or even Sven. Golden Guardians, I've mentioned both of these guys, I think would be an upgrade over what we got out of Stixay in summer. NRG got rid of their GM. I don't think that those core five are staying together. If you just swap out FBI for Doublelifters Vent, still feel like that's an upgrade. Which I don't think we've talked about. I'm absolutely shocked at the NRG GM situation because this is the guy that from all accounts was the glue, was the guy that kept it all together, brought it together for this NRG team and brought that belief in. So uh, questionable about seeing him. Uh, just LCS things. That's just how we operate, you know? You're very right. That is just LCS things. There's other conversations to be had about someone like Double If You could be looking at even like a team like Team Liquid, maybe. You know, a little reunion with Core JJ could be something spicy. And of course, in that free agent pool as well, Mr. Speaker, fresh from FlyQuest, could be teaming up with his boy. We know Double If loves his friends, loves to bring them on for these competitive rides. Could see that this year. Uh, listen, if the Shopify Rebellion want to immediately get a fan base and carry on that TSM legacy. We've seen they're already, uh, hopefully, retaining insanity. You bring in a mostly domestic squad that features Spica and Doublelift? Uh, that's how you start your first split in a league. Uh, Reginald would never bring something like that together. Yes, Shopify Rebellion, that is a pretty darn quick ticket to getting yourself some hype, getting yourself some fans. Uh, this landscape right now with what things are going to be and of course understanding yes we're going to see budgets yes we're going to see tighter restrictions on things i think what the opportunities are and what players are available is going to make this an, a spicy and interesting off season in the lcs and you know if there are budget cuts interesting i feel like a guy like double if might take a pay cut to be on a competitive roster because, uh, let's be honest the guy's done pretty well for the last 10 years and i would assume and he's kind of talked about this. He values that competition more than getting paid. That's the number one, if not the only one reason why he has come back. He has talked about that. And again, those aspirations, that competitiveness. He's And, you know, again, stating given last year's result, not a one and done. I am back and I'm hungry and I want this. They were one of the I'm best bot lanes in the LCS, him and Busio, by the way. Yeah, so I think that this is going to be a, a top-tier player, once again, that has to be looked at. And with the opportunities, Shopify Rebellion, maybe even a Golden Guardians enter the picture type of thing. There are plenty of, of nice twists and sprinkles that could be going on in this LCS offseason. JoJo and Cloud9 are the, the big domino to fall for this LCS offseason, but I think it's just the start. There's still so many guys up in the air that we don't know where they're going to be ending up. And it's going to be the same across all the other major regions. The only reason you're not hearing anything out of the LCK and LPL yet is they're still playing at Worlds. They still got business to sort out before we get to the business of next year. So, yeah, you got to be waiting on those ones a little bit. The LEC starting to bubble up a little bit extra, a little bit more. Not quite LCS levels of heat, but we're getting there. You better buckle yourselves up for that off-season ride. But for now, enjoy these rumors. Enjoy the world's games to come and get yourself ready. And unfortunately for the LEC, you might have to endure seeing more players coming over oh. to the lcs for 2024 but that is it today for league unlock eric and mark here with you beauties as always thank you for watching and we will catch you on that flippity flip